Welcome to Woodworking with Wes today. We're in the shop and we've got a special project. We're going to build a picture frame. But we're not going to do it the standard way you would do a picture frame with a mitered corner. We're going to do our picture frame with a style and rail set like you would do a door. This would be our rail, this would be our style, and we're going to do our joint like that. Now, we have our stuff all laid out. This is our router table that we're going to be doing the work on. We'll show you that in a minute. Here's our test pieces that we always do first when we do our uh, doors. This is our styles. This is our rails. This is some stuff that we're going to be doing in a little bit, and I'm going to show you that's going to be a neat little fun feature. We've got our hearing protection, our grippy gloves to hang on, and we're ready to go. In doing a style and rail set, the first thing we always do is the end of our rail stock. Now this is could be also be called a cope and stick style and rail set. It's all the same thing. But you always do the ends of your rail stock to line up and get ready to do it. And that's, so that's what we're going to do first. We've already got our router table set up with that bit. And this is our rail piece. Now, I always make my styles and rails whenever I'm doing style and rail sets with doors, picture frames, anything like that. I always cut my wood to the length that I need and double wide. When we get all done, this will be split into two pieces. I do that for safety so that I can hang on to my wood better and I also get a better cut through my router table when I do two at a time. First thing, however, I always do a sample piece to make sure that I'm set up correctly. We'll get our hearing protection on. Let's watch and go through. Now because we're just doing one picture frame, one door, we're all done with the rail part. We've just done the two ends of our rails. We're ready to go and we'll set up our router bit now with the style cutter and we'll make the grooves on both sides. We have to take the router apart, change bits. First thing we do, unplug our power for safety and change out our bit. We have our bit set up that cuts the groove part for the styles and rails. We used our sample piece to make sure we were lined up perfectly so that our groove lined up with the tongue that we had already done. We have just a little feather here. I call them little feathers. That's just fine. We have to get those out of the way as far as that goes. But that just shows that I'm right on where I need to be. Let's run our sample piece and put the two pieces together, make sure that they go together like they're supposed to, and then we're ready to run our groove part. Okay, let's see how we did. Let's slide that in there. Oh, 
look at that. Get our hammer here and pound it down. Yeah, that's going to fit just fine. That's going to work out really good. I want to point one thing out. When we ran our groove stock, we often end up with little chips along that edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece over. We're going to set our joiner to take off just a 32nd of an inch. We're going to joint this edge a 32nd of an inch to clean up those little chips and rerun it through the router and that will give us a nice, clean, chip-free edge when we put it together. I always do that when I do my doors to make sure that my uh, style and rail set come together good, clean, nice, crisp edges. Just makes for a better door. And we're going to do the same thing for our picture frame. We're going to go ahead and do all of that now. By taking that little cut off of the face of my style and rail stock with the jointer, it just cleans up that edge, cleans up all the little chips, and then when we reroute, because we're only taking off just a thirty of a second of an inch, it won't make any more chips as we run through the sh uh, router table the second time, and we'll have a beautiful, clean, crisp edge to go together on our style and rest set. We've now completed all of the router work that we have to do with our router table. So we're going to take this down and get it out of the way. Our next step is to go over and split these into our style and rail widths that we want. We are doing three and a half inch style and rails all the way around so that it'll give us a nice uh, heavy looking frame. So let's go to the table saw, cut those, and then we're coming back and putting it together. ready to glue our styles and rails together. There's just one little thing left to do before we glue it together. Um, as we run it through the, the uh, router, like I say, it leaves these little feathers. I call them feathers. I don't know what the right word is, but I like to just take those off with a little piece of sandpaper before I glue them up so they're not in the way on either side. They're there because the tongue, this tongue piece, is a little wider than the actual groove 
that is put there. The reason that's done that way is so that when the tongue goes in the groove, it fits very tight, makes for a good tight joint. So there's, as you run the style and rail point together, um, there's, or the, yeah, the style and rail cut together, there's always that little feather that hangs in there and I take that feather out. Now we're gonna glue this together just like we would a door only we don't have a panel in the middle. This would be like we would glue together a glass door. So this piece will fit here. And this piece will fit here. And then of course the other piece goes on top and that makes our frame. Let's go ahead and glue it up. Very good, we're square. Now, gotta wait for that to dry, then we sand out. We've now allowed our frame to dry, so we're going to sand it. We're not going to take and sand this through the wide belt sander. I milled my wood to 7 eighths of an inch thick and we'd like to keep it as plump as possible. So we're just going to sand this with a palm sander and then get ready to do our fancy little feature strip. We've sanded our frame 80 grit and we're not going to go any further than that right now because we're going to put in a little inlay strip around the border of our frame. It's going to look like this. Now I milled these pieces earlier. We're going to cut a groove in our frame and then we're going to pound in a little strip like that and it's going to come an inch in all the way around. Now because we, did a, we didn't do a picture frame type door. We would have put that in in advance, but it's gonna make a fancy little cross corner on this frame. I wanted that to be uh, kind of a real interesting little feature. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go over the table saw, cut our groove, and get ready to put in our strip. We have our frame sanded and ready to put in our feature strip. Our feature strip is just a piece of Peruvian walnut that I milled earlier to quarter of an inch thick and half of an inch tall, so quarter by half, and we're going to dado a track into the parts of our frame to line this feature strip up. So first thing we do is we set our table saw blade so that it's not quite a half inch deep. So we, we don't want this to be below the surface, so we want it to stick up a little bit and we'll sand it off, and then we'll set a, our saw at an inch. We'll go all the way around and do this. Now we're going to run the piece top and bottom first and glue those in and then after we sand those down flush then we'll do the side pieces and we do that because I have to dado through one to put the other one in. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. But let's get started.
when we put these pieces in, we want to give it plenty of glue because that's the only thing that's going to be holding it in. There'll be no nails or screws or anything, just glue. So we want to make sure we get a good glue on this so that it will hold good. So we're just going to give a bead down one side, then turn around and go bead down the other side. That'll give us plenty of glue. And we've got to make sure that we get all the way out to the ends. Don't need, don't need to worry about getting a little extra glue on the surface. We're going to resand this, so not a problem as far as that goes. And we'll put our strip in here. Pump down good. Same on this side. Okay, we've got to let that dry, and then we'll put the other pieces in. It's been a few hours since we glued in our first inlay strip. Since then, we have grooved and put in our second inlay strip. We've sanded it down flush and sanded the edges. One of the other things I've done is when we did our style and rail cuts on our router, it left a little lip. Uh, see, right here you can see it better. It left a little lip on the back side with the groove. We have taken out that little lip on the back side to allow our picture frame, or I mean our picture and our glass to set inside our frame. That gives us our picture frame look. On our final sand, we're going to sand to 180. We're going to put a one quarter inch round over on the edge and then off to the paint shop for a clear lacquer finish that will really make our colors pop. Now, this is cherry wood that we've used and our inlay is black walnut, a Peruvian black walnut. And when you lacquer Peruvian black walnut, it goes really dark. So this is going to be a real contrast between our natural cherry and our dark walnut. It's really going to highlight that inlay strip. So let's put on our final sand and our routed edge. Routed edge first, then final sand. Before we do our final sand, we'll go through and break all our edges and sand our route and then we'll just do the face sand with our final 180 and we'll be ready to go. Well, that sanded out beautiful. I love cherry and I love the way black walnut has such a great contrast with it. Off to the paint shop. We're all done in the paint shop now with our final coat of lacquer on our new picture frame. 
The lacquer really brings out the beautiful color of cherry and walnut and the contrast that it shows off. This was a fun project, a nice addition to anyone's home to show off their artwork or their pictures. Hanging on the wall, this would be a great little project. And we'll do some more projects next time when we meet on woodworking with Wes.